Welcome to the Now Detroit. I'm Joanne Purton. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. One of our 7 Action News crews helped to save a man's life. We were there this morning investigating another story when a man actually yelled out of a window for help. It was a remarkable story watching this unfold today. We want to get straight out to the Now's Kimberly Craig. T Kim, tell us exactly what happened in this case and what you guys did to help. Yes, uh, Joanne and Carol and I just finished knocking on the door here and as I was walking down the steps here, my photographer and I, we heard a man yell out from the side here, who's there? I said we're from Channel 7 and hoping to talk to people about a murder that took place out on the street here yesterday. That's when the man began to tell us that he needed help and he was bleeding to death, so I called 911. We're not going anywhere. He, he, he said he got shot last night. That's when we called 911 and Detroit police responded within minutes, but the door was locked and maybe even blocked. So they had to use a battering ram to get in. And when that didn't work, they went to the side door where the shooting victim was laying just inside in a stairwell. He told police he was shot around 10 o'clock last night. That was about four hours after a man was murdered here on Fleming Street near Lance and police had cleared the scene. Police said it appears the man killed yesterday may actually own this greenhouse here. We're not sure if he was coming to collect rent or what, but he was shot and killed. Now, police say they did catch a suspect in that murder from yesterday. Question now is who came back and shot this man? Sources say they're somehow connected, but we don't know if there was some sort of retaliation because they thought the man that we found here was actually involved. Now, uh, when we were actually here, this man was desperate for help, and our photographer, Danny Stricker, not knowing what was about to happen, because you got to remember, we're thinking the murder happened somewhere out here. And we hear, we're just knocking on this door, just like we canvas neighborhoods, typically in different stories. And we hear a man yelling for help. He was saying he was bleeding to death. And coming up at five o'clock, you're gonna hear the desperation in his voice from the man himself, because Danny was rolling on the video. We didn't know what was gonna happen. So we called 911, police were quick to arrive here. The man was adamant that he was not here when the shooting happened, and he doesn't even know how he got involved in the middle of all of this. Back to you. It's just remarkable, Kim, watching this all unfold as we all did today. You know, we never like, certainly in the media, we don't like to be the story here, but you guys Absolutely. really became the story, and thank God you were there today. Has it really all kind of sunk in for you? Well, you know, it, it, and it's uh, slowly it is. And you know what was really unusual is that when I was knocking on the door, the man wasn't saying anything. But it was as I was walking away, he yelled, who's there? It was almost as if he was still scared that whoever shot him last night was coming back or had already come back and that he was trying to make sure that it wasn't them. And again, you'll hear again coming up at five o'clock, the desperation in his voice. He was saying, don't leave me, don't leave me. And we had to move out of the way because police told us to fall back a little bit from the ear because one, they had to get their units in here also. But they, you know, in a situation like this, you don't know if there's somebody that's setting police up. In a situation like we had just about a week and a half ago, you don't know what is going on. So we, we went back, we pulled our truck back a few, a few houses here waited for police arrived and soon after Detroit police arrived here on the scene you could tell when they started using that battering ram that this was for real this man was inside and he was bleeding we understand he has been shot in the leg that man again telling police he was homeless he actually says he had nothing to do with the murder and that he was outside when someone came back this is after the scene was cleared from the shooting earlier yesterday someone came back shot at him they may have thought he was somehow involved but again you're going to hear from that man himself coming up at five o'clock about he says he had nothing to do with this and he was just saying thank God that somebody had found him. Back I'm to you. sure he was saying thank God that you all found him but I'm sure you all were nervous too because I would have certainly been nervous outside of that car thinking that outside of that house thinking that someone had been shot and murdered and then there you are finding someone else Kim as well. Absolutely. And this is I mean it really just as much as I've covered crime in my 20 years here in Detroit alone you, you, you never really understand what police go through when they're entering a house. They have no idea what's going on. You know, they're being called for help. You, you never know what is on the other side of that door. So I certainly even having good friends as police officers, I have a new meaning and respect for what they do every day. Back Absolutely. And we respect you too being out mm. there on the front lines each and every day. You and Danny Stricker. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you.